I'm struggling. I'm trying to, I'm trying to finish strong and I'm just not satisfied. My emotions are all over the place. Lord, I'm trying to figure out, do I go left or do I go right? Or do I go straight? I'm struggling. I have all these voices in my head. Trying to walk this path of life. Life seems like it is full of darkness and not any light. It seems like I keep going through the same tunnel over and over. Well, I'm looking for you to show me the way. Which way? Do I keep moving forward or do I turn back? I'm not sure. Your word says, if you do what the Lord wants, he will make certain each step you take is sure. The Lord will hold your hand and if you stumble, you still won't fall. Ebenezer Baptist Church, Still Creek, North Carolina. Come on, if you would, we welcome you this Sunday morning to take a moment to like, comment, and share. Come on, we need you to share this experience this morning because God is still faithful. He's still good. He's still working miracles. He's doing great things in our midst, and we're excited about who he is. Take a moment and put some hand clap emojis in the text box and give God some praise. Let your members and your friends know that you're glad to be online with them this morning. Tell them the pandemic is almost over. Hallelujah, tell them we're almost face to face. Come on, just give God some praise because he didn't let you die in it, but he gave you strength, he gave you ammunition, and he gave you Holy Ghost power. If you're grateful for the Holy Ghost, just clap your hands real big. Come on, all over the internet world, clap your hands and celebrate. Hallelujah, this is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad therein. Hallelujah, I greet you with Jesus' joy this morning. We're so glad you are online. Follow me in the word of God this Sunday morning from John chapter four. Thank you, Jesus. John chapter four, verse 23 says, but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Yes, For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Verse 24 says, God is a spirit, yes. and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you for this worship experience this morning. Father, we thank you, God, that you're already resided in this place. Thank you, God, how you're traveling through the, the air streams and through the broadcast even now. Father, I thank you that you're going to YouTube and Facebook, and God, our interaction this morning is gonna to touch and prick somebody's heart. Father, I pray even now that an explosion meet them in their living room. Father, that's somebody that's been dealing with some things this week. God, there's somebody that's searching for some answers. But God, we simply say Jesus is the answer for the world today. Father, we give you glory for what you're going to do. We thank you that everyone under the sound of my voice and across the broadcast, God, they're ready, they're amped, they're excited to worship you. Because God, they're ready to worship in spirit and in truth. And God, will stand and proclaim if you don't do anything else, you've already done more than enough. So God, we give you great praise and we give you great honor I said we give you great praise and we give you great honor I said we give you great praise and we give you great honor one more time we give you great praise 
and we give you great honor in Jesus name we pray if you prayed that prayer I say it, it is so and amen and let's celebrate Jesus hallelujah hallelujah come on worship with us this morning the song just simply says let the glory of the Lord rise among us come on if you want God's glory put your hands together wherever you are come on make some noise praise sing make some noise hallelujah let the glory of the lord rise among us let the glory of the lord rise among us let the praises of our king rise among us let it rise yeah let the glory of the lord rise among us let the glory of the lord rise among us let the praises of our king rise among us We give you praise today. Cry out, oh, oh, oh. Somebody say, let it rise. Come on, give him the glory that's due unto his name. Hallelujah, we give you praise. Come on, let the glory of, let the glory of the Lord. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord. Let it rise. Let the praises of our King Come on, let it rise Come on, sing Let the glory of the Lord We give you praise Let the glory of the Lord Come on, let it rise Let the praises of our King Let it rise Jesus, come on, put your hands together and say, let the glory of the Lord, come on, let it rise, let the glory of the Lord, let it rise, let the praises of our King, let it rise. Father, we give your name to glory. Let the praises of our King Let it rise We need you Jesus Sing on this morning and we lift him up come on praise team let the songs of the Lord come on let it rise let the songs of the Lord come on let it rise let the praises of the King let it rise somebody say let the songs of the Lord Jesus, let the songs of the Lord, let it rise, let the praises of the King, let it rise.
Amen. Let the glory of the Lord go. Come on, give him praise. Let the glory of the Lord go. Let it rise. Let the praises of the King. Come on, let it rise. Oh, oh, oh. Sing it again. Let the glory. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord. Come on, let it rise. Let the praises of the King. Let it rise. says yeah yeah right here can you say it say yeah 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 we wanna see you Jesus see you high and lift it up see you high and lift it up see you high and lift it up yeah 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 among us let the glory of the Lord rise among us let the praises of our King rise among us let it rise let the songs of the Lord rise among us let the songs of the Lord rise among us joy of our king rise among us let it rise oh oh let it rise oh oh we need it rise Here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, you're all together the worthy you're all together one you're wonderful to me here I am to worship here I am to
to bow down here I am to say that you're my God you're all together lovely <laughs> you're all together worthy you're all together wonderful wonderful to me see here i am here i am to worship here i am Here I am to say, I am to say you're, my you're my God. You're all together lovely. All yes, you are Jesus. Worthy. All together worthy. Together worthy. You're all together wonderful. All together yes, God. Worthy. You're so wonderful to me. You're so wonderful to me. Come on, release your hands. Say, here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that. much it call how much it to see to see my upon the cross come on think about that I'll never know how much it costs yes God we'll never know the price just to see my sin Upon the cross
cause to see my sins upon upon the cross even when I don't run this race well I never know how much it's cost to see my sins upon the cross oh how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because all he first there is a name I love to hear I love to sing his word it sounds like music in my ear the sweetest name on earth is all how I love Jesus I feel like running and it's all how I love Jesus oh how I love Jesus because as he first love me I'll never know why you love me Jesus because he first he first loved me and I'll never know why you can because oh, because he first because he first he didn't have to do it, but because he first, oh, because oh, he first loved, he first loved me. Now, come on, where you are, give God praise. Put some emojis in the text box if you're just grateful for God's love. Come on, if you're thankful that he loves you, if you're grateful that he didn't let you go, if you thank you that he didn't cut you off, but he gave you an opportunity to run this race, come on, give God some glory. Come on, let's keep this worship flowing. Let's keep it flowing right where you are in your living room, in your car, wherever you may be this morning. If you are having a worship experience, one thing they taught me in the great state of Alabama that every now and then when God moves in your life, you ought to show some sign. Anybody know what I'm talking about? In other words, for you, for you new saints, that simply means that when you recognize that there is a God and you recognize that he knows you by name and you recognize that he has been keeping you when you can't keep yourself that's the why that's the reason why we worship the way that we do we don't put a time frame on it because we realize where our help comes from we realize that we wouldn't have made it to September 2020 if it wasn't for the one that loved us if it wasn't for the one that cares for us send up some hearts for him send up some likes for him testify about his goodness testify about his love to God be the glory to God be the glory to God be the glory for all of the things 
that he has done. Amen. Amen. We're excited about worship today as we continue to go forward. And we're excited about what God has been saying. And I'm really excited. As, as sometimes you come into the house of the Lord and, and you feel a little bit tired. But when you get into the place, Elder Q, when you get into the place, Minister Barbara, when you get into the place and you feel the presence of God, not because of the physical structure, but because of the people here, because of the relationships that are forming. And when I got into the place and I got around my kinfolk, because you do know that that all skin folk ain't kin folk but but when I got round the folk that I feel like got my back I I felt like worship and I I feel like dancing I, I I feel like preaching I don't know about you but I hope right where you are maybe you came in the worship tire but now you feel the presence of the living God in your worship room why don't you just give him your best praise right where you are amen to God be the glory amen my brothers and my sisters, we have entered chapter four of our Finish Strong series. In chapter one, God has been speaking to us about the fact that he is calling his people to finish this year strong. I believe that's a message to the nation, a message to all of his children, that for what is around the corner, for what is going to happen in 2021, you need to finish this year strong strong type that in finish strong have you been walking with me from the beginning for those of you have, that have been walking with us you also understand that we went into chapter two we reminded you that if you're going to finish the year strong you can't be satisfied where you are you can't be satisfied with this current political environment you can't be satisfied with all the things that are happening as it relates to injustice if you're going to finish strong you can't be lazy you have to be the people that God has called you to be and then we said if we are honest raw and real we have had to deal with our emotions that's right God said that if you're going to finish this year strong not only uh, must you understand that you have to build a strong foundation for tomorrow not only must you understand the fact that you can't be satisfied it, this struggle has been real for many of us many of us have lost people this year many of us have lost things this year many of us have gone through a lot this year and so God said just like uh, Christ talked about the fact that he was distressed to the point of death we have to be honest with where we are and deal with our emotions but the reason I gave you that background because today in chapter 4 I know that God is going to speak to you because you still have some unanswered questions so here in chapter 4 God is simply saying this that I am going to show you the way can you type that in that God will show you the way our scripture for chapter 4 is found in Psalm the 37th chapter verses 23 through 25 I'm reading the new King James version today there is something about that poetic language of the King James version that every now and then I got to go back to that I, I really like how, how it's said here when it simply declares this that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way though he fall he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholds him with his hand the writer goes on to say that I have been young and now I am old yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread my brothers and sisters, as you march toward the finish line of 2020, God told me to simply remind you that he is going to show you the way. You don't have to guess. Some of us spend too much time as people of God guessing. God is saying that I'm going to show you. I'm going to reveal my will to you because if you don't know my will, how can you ever operate in it? God is saying that get rid of the noise, get rid of the distractions. I'm going to show you the way. God is saying, you hear me? You're still frying chicken. You're still cooking eggs. You ain't paying attention in digital church. Get rid of the noise. Get rid of the distractions. I am going to show you the way God is saying that for some of you I'm going to show you the way and it's going to stretch 
and is going to challenge your faith. It's going to take you into uncomfortable places where, as you all know, when God calls us into uncomfortable places, everybody around us can't go. And as a matter of fact, you ought to be glad when God calls you into an uncomfortable place But because it, it, it serves as a season for some sifting, if you will, because everything that you're connected to can't go into the next place that God is taking you. What do you mean, preacher? I want to remind you that some of us in this season, as we close out this year, we got to operate like Abraham operated. One of my favorite passages of scripture comes out of Genesis, the 12th chapter, when God spoke to Abram and said, Abram, get up, leave everything behind. You're going somewhere. And, and Abram replied, where am I going? Don't worry about it, Abram. I will show you when you get there. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice? You know in your spirit that God is talking to you, but you've been asking him where you're going. You've been asking him what next, what's next, but God hasn't revealed it to you. Well, you got to learn from Abram that sometimes it's not until our feet get to moving that God will show us the way. But for those of you that are willing to move your feet, for those of you that are willing to operate based on faith, God says that when you are obedient and do what I ask you to do, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bless you real good. He told Abram that I'm going to make your name great. Abram, I'm going to make you the father of many nations. And, and God chose to make Abram's name great. Not so that he could be on the cover of O Magazine. Not so that he could be featured on the news channels. He chose to make Abram's name great because he trusted Abram to give him the glory. I wish I could talk to somebody right now. It's no shame to desire greatness in your life. I desire greatness for my family. I desire greatness for this ministry. And I think that God can trust me with greatness because when he blesses me, I know not to take credit for his work. I I know to give his name all of the glory. I wish I could talk to somebody right now with an aspiration to be great, aspire to be great. But when they when they put the camera in your face, when they put the microphone to your mouth, you better remember to give God all the glory. Can somebody type that in right now as a testimony that you've been through a lot, but you are giving God the glory because you are on your way to a great place and God is going to show you the way my brothers and sisters Psalm 37 is a story about one who can help us to understand that God keeps his promises when he said to us that he would show us the way Psalm 37 is the cry of one of God's anointed it's it's the cry of one who was said to be a man after God's own heart Psalm 37 is the cry of David. You remember David who was anointed as a boy to become a king. You remember David. David is awesome because as he is speaking to us at this particular point, he is older in age. As he is speaking to us at this particular point, he is using poetry. Any poets out there? Shout out all of the poets out there. Poetry is a beautiful thing because you can express yourself in an amazing way. So David here uses an acrostic, which is when the words of his poem line up consecutively with the Hebrew language, he, he, Hebrew alphabet, if you will. He uses an acrostic to talk to our hearts to help us to understand that God. God will show us the way and during this poem he goes and he starts to talk that the people of God don't worry and don't fret about the ways of the evil doer. David goes on to say for all of you all that are getting by by cutting corners for all of you all that are getting by by doing shady business God says to those people that they will soon be cut down like the grass and, and wither as a green herb. You ain't got to cut no corners. David is old now. He's testifying not about what he heard, but he's testifying about what he knows. David says, let me tell you something. I learned something as a young man and it was confirmed when I was a, a, a middle-aged man. And now that I'm old, let me tell you something. I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. David is testifying to us that no matter what you go through, 
God will show you the way. And you know, I believe that David is the best person to testify to us because while his anointing took him to the palace, while he was anointed, he also spent time in the pit. Did you hear me? Although his anointing took him to the palace, while he was anointed, he spent time in the pit. In other words, David made some decisions that destroyed his family. David made some decisions that destroyed his kingdom. David made some decisions that cost it all because he tried to risk it all for a few minutes after taking too long to gaze across the rooftop. Somebody went to Sunday school and know what I'm talking about. David is one who spent time in the pit because he made some bad decisions. But let me tell you something. We, when he was in the pit and when he was in the palace, there was one thing that never changed about David. That thing is the fact that he remained anointed. Did you hear me? When he was in the pit or when he was in the palace, when he was making good decisions, when he was making bad decisions, when he was, with, when he was stepping out of line, he never lost his anointing. David helps us to understand that when I messed up, I learned to pray different. Is there anybody out there? Talk to me that you messed up one time and you, and you learned to pray different. David said, when I messed up, God didn't turn his back on me. I just learned to pray a little different. He said, I learned to say, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. God, anoint me afresh with your Holy Spirit. I need to talk to somebody right now that God is telling to finish strong. Maybe you need to pray like David David prayed for the spirit of the living God to fall fresh right where you are. You know some my brothers and sisters, that's something we ought to preach and pray every day that the spirit of the living God would fall fresh on us because I had to deal with somebody with a nasty attitude today. I almost lost my mind today. I said some things I shouldn't have said today. I thought some thoughts I shouldn't have thought today. God created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me so I can do everything that you have called me to do. David helps us to understand that God, when he has anointed you and he has appointed you, he will give you everything that you need if you're going to finish strong. I, I, I thank God because David never lost his anointing. God used him in an amazing way. Even though David had his challenges, God still used him to build a great kingdom. Even though David had his challenges, God still used him to slay some giants. There are some people right now who've had some challenges this year, but God's still going to use you to slay some giants. And David helps us to understand something that God is going to help us to finish strong this year and all we got to do is walk in the text. That's right, today I don't really have a whole lot of points, if you will. I love points because points help us to learn, but today all we're going to do is walk right through this text. So if you hadn't pulled out your Bible in a while, if you hadn't pulled out, downloaded one on your, Bible, on your phone yet, I need you to walk with me because I want you to highlight these words as we go through these these three verses. I won't be with you long today. We're just going to walk through this text and I'm going to get out of your way because God is saying that I'm going to show you and I'm going to show you right here in the word. My brothers and sisters, the first thing that we see in the text right there in verse 23 is the steps. Can you type that in? Can you say that out loud wherever you are? The steps, right? So as we look at the text, it says the steps. And then what was David talking about? when he said the steps. The steps were referring to the course of your life. When, I, when, when we're talking about the steps, it's the reminder that God is going to show you the steps that are in alignment with his will for the course of your life. Your steps are ordered by the Lord. And when, when I looked at the word steps in its original language, it was not as if you were shucking and jiving. It was not as if you were walking backwards. It was not if you were two-stepping. It's not as if you were doing a stanky leg. I had to throw that in because somebody went to sleep. They heard a stanky leg. They woke up. My brothers and sisters, when God said that he was ordering your
your steps. It's a, the word steps in Hebrew is equivalent to the word that we would use for marching. In other words, when God says that the steps, he says that for my people who I have anointed and appointed, you're moving forward in this season of your life as a soldier would move towards an objective. When a soldier is on an assignment moving toward an objective, it doesn't matter if the soldier has to march over a hill. It doesn't matter if the soldier has to go through the valley. No matter what it takes, you're going to make it to the objective. And as a matter of fact, because you are a mission focused soldier, you're not going to waste your steps. Uh, because wasting steps is wasting energy. There's some folk right now that have been wasting steps. Uh, going in places you ain't got no business going. It's going into situations that God didn't call you to. God is saying that your steps are ordered, but you got to be laser focused if you're going to get to the mountaintop. I wish I had some mountaintop saints uh, that want to march on assignment to get to the place that God has called you to be. But brothers and sisters, he said, listen, the steps are ordered, but the steps are not ordered for everybody, right? It's right there in the text. The next part of verse 23 says, the good man. So in other words, the steps of a what? Of a good man are ordered. I always like asking questions in sermons. I wish we were in Bible study. Talk to me out there. What would you consider to be a good man? What would you consider to be a good person? What would you consider to be good in the eyes of God? This is that wonderful opportunity where you talk to some people who will remind you that if you just do good things for people, you're considered to be good in the eyes of God. That if you just live right, you're just considered to be good in the eyes of the Lord. Maybe if you pick up litter on the side of the road on Saturday, you're good in the eyes of the Lord. Maybe volunteer and read books to the children. Now I lay me down to sleep. Uh, you'll be considered good in the eyes of the Lord. Well, my brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Keep reading to the children. Keep taking care of the seniors. Keep cleaning up the community. But I'm here to tell you that your works will never make you good in the eyesight of the living God. What do you mean, preacher? It was the apostle Paul who was having a conversation with some Jewish believers in the book of Romans and they figured that if they were just obedient to the law if they were obedient to everything that God said in the Old Testament they figured they'd be good enough to get into heaven but it was Paul that had to remind them boy your righteousness ain't no better than a dish rag or as King James would say your righteousness is nothing but like a filthy rag in other words the only way that any of us have access to the father is through the death burial and resurrection of his son I'm just trying to help somebody who the world has told you that you're no good. I'm trying to help somebody who the world has told you that you have no future. I'm here to remind you that if you confess your sins and God is faithful to you, forgive your sins. If you call on his son, his name is Jesus. We call him Emmanuel, the Prince of Peace. There's something about the name Jesus. It is sweet, I know. Noah. And for anybody that calls on his name, you've been washed in the blood. The blood of the Lamb. And that means that you've been bought back from the hands of the enemy. You've been bought with a price. That price was his life. And every now and then, when you understand that you've been bought, every now and then, when you understand redemption, the senior saints remind us that the redemption of the Lord uh, ought to say so. Uh, but let me send this mic to you because there's some redeemed folks out there right now that's trying to say so. No, it's for Jesus. My brothers and sisters, so the steps uh, of a good man are what? Are, 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 are ordered. That's just what it says, ordered. When we look at order, we're still right there in verse 23. It's a reminder that we have been ordained that our steps the steps of a good man are being ordained they're being directed by the Lord and he delights in his way my brothers and sisters God is ordaining and directing your path personally ensuring that you are ready for the journey in other words when we are looking at the word ordered when we're looking at the fact that we are it, it, it means being ordained 
the best thing that I could think about was when I accepted my call to preach. They said, we're going to call you a minister for a while. And in and, and our, and our way of, of ministry, that's what they do. They license you as a minister. But they watch you for a while. They observe you for a while. See if you're still a little crazy, you know, a little bit. See if you still at the spot at 3 o'clock in the morning. They watch you for a while. They, they observe you for a while. They, they want to see if you're still cussing folk out and stuff. They, they watch you for a while. They, they observe you for a while. See if you know any scripture other than Jesus wept. They watch you for a while. They, they, before they give you the microphone, they're going to see if you're going to go do any sick business. They watch you for a while before they give you any more authority. They're going to see if you're going to be faithful over the little bit that God has gave you. They watch you for a while. And, and after a season of watching, they come to the conclusion that, that maybe you're not perfect, but you're ready for the next step. They they, they, they ordain you and they, and they give you more responsibility. They give you some more authority. Can I help you to understand where I'm going? What I'm suggesting to you that the steps of a a good man being ordered by God is similar but wait there's a whole lot more as it relates to God you see when God called you when God assigned you when God equipped you he did in fact give you a little bit to see if you would be faithful over the little but when God saw that some point on the journey you started to be faithless over the little I want to remind you that God didn't give up on you God has reminded us in scripture that because your steps are ordered even when you are faithless uh, I remain faithful did you hear me right now that God is saying that when you get out of shape uh, I'm gonna mold you and shape you and form you into the place that you're supposed to be when you get off the path uh, I'm gonna give you a little love tap on the bottom uh, that's why you're going through what you're going through because God just give you a little love tap on the bottom because your steps are ordained by the Lord. Am I preaching to myself? Uh, is there anybody here out there in social media that can testify that God has ordained your steps? Uh, you can testify with Luke the 12th chapter that says the very hairs on your head are numbered by the Lord. Uh, that constant reminder. Uh, he cares about the intimate details of your life. Uh, he cares about your health. Uh, he cares about your finances. He cares about your relationship. He cares about you. Uh, cast your cares on Jesus uh, for he cares for you. My brothers and sisters, the steps uh, of a good man are ordered. Who are they ordered by? They're not ordered by 45. Uh, who are they ordered by? They're not ordered by politicians. Uh, who are they ordered by? They're not ordered by your hookups uh, who are they ordered by they not ordered by your resume uh, who are they ordered by they are ordered by the Lord uh, my brothers and sisters uh, I wanted to skip past this uh, but the Holy Spirit kept bringing me back to it he says the people need to understand who is ordering their steps uh, the Holy Spirit said don't you see when you look at the Lord in the text uh, every time you see it it is something capitalized every time you see it I have put emphasis there because the people need to realize who is God in their every footstep uh, I had to look at the Lord more carefully and I realized that the Lord here is Yahweh God you see Yahweh was the proper name that they understood the God of Israel to be you see there were a lot of gods out there but when they called on Yahweh they was calling on the one and only true God when they called on Yahweh Yahweh is the name uh, that comes out of Exodus uh, you remember Exodus don't you there Moses was uh, trying to find the path for his life uh, there Moses was uh, who has spent 40 years in the wilderness uh, somebody can relate to Moses uh, because you in your own wilderness right now there Moses was he knew there was a call on his life uh, but he didn't understand what God was doing uh, there Moses was who couldn't sleep at night uh, there's somebody out here right now you wrestling with something
something because you know that there is more required of you. There Moses was. He told his wife, uh, I'm going on a walk. Where you going, baby? I don't know. I need to clear my head. Uh, and as he was on that walk, uh, the scripture reminds us uh, he came into a burning bush. Uh, and even though the bush was on fire, the bush was not consumed. Uh, and before you know it, not only was it not consumed, uh, the bush started talking. Uh, and when the bush started talking, uh, all of a sudden Moses recognized uh, the call that was on his life. Uh, I wish God would talk to you right now uh, so you would recognize the call is on your life. Uh, don't worry about the form that God comes in. Uh, you ought to just be glad that the Lord has come. Uh, some of y'all didn't miss your blessing this year because the person you was looking for uh, didn't bring the message. Uh, he wasn't worried about it with some twigs and shrubs. Uh, he realized that it was the voice of the Lord. Uh, I wish I had somebody right now who ain't worried about a little old country preacher. You can't even see me right now. All you hear is the voice of the Lord. Uh, and when Moses heard the voice of the Lord, uh, the voice gave him his assignment uh, to go down there in Egypt. Uh, you are a deliverer, Moses. Uh, go down to Egypt. Uh, you are a way maker, Moses. Uh, go down to Egypt. Uh, you are anointed, Moses. Uh, and Moses said, when I get there, tell him who sent you. When I get there, what is your name? He said, tell him that I'm the great I am. Tell him that Yahweh sent you. I had to go the long way just so you could understand that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the great I am. That constant reminder that whatever you need, that's where God will be. Is there anybody that can testify? You know God as the great I am. Your bridge over troubled water. Your help in your hopelessness. Your shelter in the time of storm. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. My brothers and sisters, he, it goes on to say, and we're almost out of here, that he delights in every detail of your life. Did you realize that God cared about every detail of your life? He cares about every detail to the point that the next time you get ready to do anything, I need you to do a better job of talking with Yahweh first. Many of us, including myself, we get in trouble when we start to do good things instead of God things. There's a lot of good things that we can do, but God things change the world. There are a lot of good things that we can do, but it's only a God thing that's going to bring you out. There are a lot of good things that we can do in this pandemic, but it's going to take a move of God for us to get to the next place. Because God is so concerned about the intimate details of your life, you got to ask yourself, this is a good point, because I had to ask you what's your raw and real moment. Your raw and real moment of the day is most of us are so in a rush to do what we want to do that we take a little time consulting with God. Most of us will just go ahead and rush and apply for the job most of it, most of us will rush and get into the relationship most of us will rush and do whatever it is that we want to do but God is saying before you do anything have a little talk with me if you really want to experience my power if you really want to experience my love don't you know I care about each and every detail of your life my brothers and sisters because he cares so much about each and every detail of your life. David helps us to understand something. Because God cares about every detail of your life, David says this about us. He says, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. Can I talk to somebody? 
I need to talk to some folks out here who want to be honest right now and admit the fact that you've fallen down. Now listen, all of us got a yesterday testimony. I'm talking about the fact I need to talk to the folk for a few minutes who fell down last night. I need to talk to the folks who fell down this morning. I need to talk to the folks that fell down in worship. Matter of fact, since I've been preaching, your mind been everywhere that it ain't supposed to be. But God says, listen, if you ever find yourself in a fallen condition, even when you fall, you are not utterly cast down in other words whatever tripped you up is not the end of you there are many times that people fall down and they never get back up again you know some of those individuals you went to high school with some of those individuals some of them are in your relationship with you right now some of them are people that you are related to they fell down and they have yet to get back up again my sisters and my brothers the only difference between you me and them is that we I've told you once uh, I've told you twice uh, I might as well tell you again that because your steps uh, are ordered by Yahweh that when you fall down he will pick you back up again I need to talk to somebody that is falling down in this season that God is a restorer that God is a regenerator that God is a rescuer talk to me if you're falling down don't be all cute with your testimony now. I need you to take off your Sunday school clothes uh, and show your tattoos. Uh, I need you to take off your Sunday school clothes. Show them tats on the back of your back. Uh, tell the world to real you that you fell down sometimes. Show the authentic you. Uh, ain't no time to be fake. Uh, tell the world that you made some choices uh, that you were not happy about. Uh, and even when you fell down, he picked you back up again I'm just trying to talk to somebody because it's time to go David says that when we fall he picked us back up again how do you know David because David says this though I was once young and now I am old I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread did you hear what I said David talks from his own testimony that I went through some dark times uh, I went through some helpless situations but my God never forsake me he was not pretending as if uh, his life was not a struggle uh, but he testifies uh, that his God never forsaked him uh, he was not pretending that everything was always good uh, but he testifies that his God never forsaked him uh, I need to talk to somebody right now uh, I know you're in a bad spot uh, but the reason we talking right now uh, is because God never forsake you uh, did you forget that some people died when they went through what you went through uh, did you forget that some people gave up uh, when they went through what they went through uh, did you forget that some people let go uh, when they went through what you went through uh, but because your God uh, has never left you uh, your God has never forsake you your God he is a provider that's why David says uh, that his seed never begs bread uh, David is a reminder that we are heirs to his promises uh, David is a reminder that he wants to bless you uh, he calls it favor there is favor available and he's going to show you the way uh, you ain't got to find it uh, you ain't got to hunt for it uh, it's unmerited uh, you don't deserve it uh, that's why we call it favor i wish i had some folk uh, that would testify that yes uh, god favors me uh, don't be mad about it uh, yes uh, God favors me. I ain't gonna hide my anointing. Yes, God favors me. My little light, it's got to shine. Because yes, God favors me. I don't deserve it, but he saw the best in me. When the rest of y'all saw the worst in me. Yes, my God favors me. And I leave you with my favorite song. I learned it in elementary school. Uh, that'll sum this whole thing up. Uh, I remember riding down the road. Uh, 
on a Sunday morning and this song came on the radio and the song simply declares order my steps God in your word lead me guide me every day send your anointing Father I pray order my steps in your word why God because I want to walk worthy my calling to fulfill please order my steps God and I'll do your blessed will the world is ever changing but you are still the same if you order my steps God I'll praise your name order my steps God in your word order my tongue God in your word guide my feet God in your word wash my heart God in your word show me how to talk God in your word I need a brand new song to sing show me how to let all praises be in your word God in your word God in your word God please God order my steps in your word let's celebrate God right where we are let's celebrate God we're going to finish strong because God is going to show us the way it's going to get better because God is going to show you the way to better you're going to accomplish the goal because God don't do it you about to make me happy my brother you're going to accomplish the goal because God is going to show you the way God is ordering your steps today today right now in this moment you have an opportunity to respond to whatever it is God is saying to you somebody right now God is ordering your steps to get reconnected to him wherever you are watching this broadcast you know who you are God is saying that you we've been disconnected too long it's time for us to get reconnected and I'll show you the way there's another sister a brother that's been searching for a church home and if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you about connecting with us we like to make it personal we put my email right here on the screen all you gotta do is shoot us a message and we will respond today because your spiritual growth and your spiritual health matters to us and there's somebody here today Y'all know I love this part of the sermon. If you have a relationship with God, testify by typing in yes. Look at the yeses flowing. Look at the testimony. Type in yes. If you're that sister or brother that you are not sure, you really don't know, I want to pray with you in this moment that God will show you how to get connected to him. His word says all you have to do is confess that you believe that his son in Jesus that Jesus Christ is his son and that he died for your sins and that he shall return for you and the Bible says that thou shalt be saved if you have made that prayer or made that confession for the first time hit us in the inbox we want to help you with your next steps forward wherever you are whatever you stand in the need of God wants to order your steps right now let that let, let that minister in your spirit for a minute let that minister in your spirit Please, God, order my steps in your word. Please, God, order my steps in your word. Please, God, order my steps in your word. May God bless you. May God keep you. May heaven smile upon you. Amen. God bless. Let's go in peace. Hey, praise God. I am so grateful that God sent you to worship with us today. I want to share a few things with you. 
Uh, first and foremost, welcome to all of our first time visitors. If you're a first time visitor, I want you to make some noise in the text box so we can acknowledge you. We don't believe you're here by accident. We believe that God sent you here. And so we're grateful for that. Uh, next, I want to remind you that the way that we are doing ministry at the level that we are doing it is because of your stewardship. You know that 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verse six through eight has been our guide. It's simply a reminder uh, that if we plant seeds generously, that God will reward us in an amazing fashion. So I'm grateful for everyone out there, all of our members that are tithing, all of our members that are giving, and even our gifts that just come and plant a seed. We love you, we appreciate you, and we can't do it without you. And I also wanna remind you, I'm excited about October the 31st and November the 1st. We are turning one years old. Turn up, turn up, turn down for what? Okay, I'm tripping. Listen, on uh, October the 31st, we will have a fall festival. Many of you may have already received that in your inbox. Our fall festival will be right outside from four to 7 p.m. But before we can party and do that in a very safe manner, we're gonna start off celebrating the fact that we're turning one by doing a mission project. As a matter of fact, we're gonna do a couple of mission projects. That information is being sent out to you as well, but we want you to know that we're excited. We're gonna celebrate by doing mission work. We're gonna celebrate with that fall festival for the kids and for you, because I hadn't seen so many of you. And on November the 1st, the first Sunday in November, we're really going to celebrate because we're going to have a limited worship experience. I wish that we could let everybody back in at one time, but we continue to have to be safe and guided by uh, CDC guidelines. So what we're going to do, a registration link is going out. It will be on the website and it's going into your inbox if we have your uh, email. Hint, hint, wink, wink, we need that. If you are going to join us in worship on the first Sunday of November, again, please go ahead and register. First come, first serve. We're doing it on a limited basis. And then as the uh, conditions continue to improve, we prayerfully will get to the point uh, down the road where we can have all of the family back together. In the meantime, if you're not comfortable, don't worry. You can still connect with us virtually. We love you. May God bless you. May God keep you. May heaven smile upon you. All the angels sing about Jesus' mighty soul, and that you.